Hubble, Mars, Hubble, in 15 years of working in space, Hubble has taken over 1 million pictures. With Hubble's help, we've learned that most of the stars in our galaxy are forming planets. Hubble was launched in 1990 and has been working on its orbit for over 20 years. Hubble You have probably noticed that the stars don't shine as bright in the city as they do in the country. That's because the city lights are so bright, they outshine the distant light of the stars. That is why it is much better to put telescopes on mountains and far away from big cities. This way, you can see many more stars. But even then, some light gets lost in the atmosphere. That's why scientists decided to send a telescope to space. This telescope is called Hubble, and it helps us uncover wonders we never have dreamed of. Taking pictures of different parts of space, it discovered many interesting facts about our universe. Found new galaxies, saw nebulae, distant stars, and planets. Every day, Hubble sends 80 gigabytes of data to the Earth, where scientists study it. Which is closer to Earth? Mm -hmm. Which object weighs more? Mm -hmm. Which is hotter? Mm -hmm. Which has got moons? Mm -hmm. Which is colder? Mm -hmm. Excellent! New mission available. The temperature of the star influences its color, so hot stars look blue, whereas cold stars look red. Every year our Milky Way galaxy gives birth to five new stars. Half of the stars in our galaxy are double. This means that two stars are so close that from a distance they look like one. How many stars do you think you can see on a bright clear day? Wrong! During the day, we can see the sun, which is also a star that is closest to us. When it disappears below the horizon, we can see thousands of stars in the sky. 
But all of them are only a small part of our galaxy, called the Milky Way. From the ground, it seems that they are all roughly the same size, but that is not true. Among them are neutron stars, brown dwarfs, red and white giants, and even super giants. In addition, the stars are at such distances from us, it is hard to imagine. The light from the nearest star after the sun travels to us for more than four years. There are stars whose light flies 10,000 years, and there are those whose light still travels to us, although they themselves no longer exist. Polaris 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 is a giant star that points to the north and is almost motionless on the night sky. Polaris has become brighter in the past 100 years. In 1200 years, the title of pole star will go to Al Rai. The stars above us are very beautiful and very useful. Before phones and before the compass, people used the stars to guide their way in travel. Those who live in the Northern Hemisphere noticed that one bright star is always in the North because it is right above the North Pole. It is called Polaris. To find Polaris, you first need to find the Big Dipper. A straight line drawn through one side of the Dipper points to Polaris. So if you stand facing Polaris, in front of you will be the North, behind you the South, east to your right and the west to your left. Try to find Polaris. Check yourself with a compass. Cygnus X-1 For the star to become a black hole at the end of its life, it should be three times larger than the Sun. At the center of our Milky Way galaxy, there is a supermassive black hole that is a million times heavier than the Sun. Some black holes rotate at the speed of 1,000 revolutions per second. Cygnus X-1 Have you ever thought of what happens to stars during their lives? All stars are born huge and very hot. As they live and die, they become smaller and cooler. At the end, a star becomes so tiny, it is called a black hole because it sucks in all the energy around it. It works like a giant cosmic vacuum. It uses gravity to pull in anything around it, be it comets, asteroids, planets, or even rays of light. A black hole is so powerful, it can even change the flow of time. Time near a black hole is much slower than on Earth. It is impossible to see a black hole, but scientists use special tools to look for them and have found about a thousand so far. One of them is next to a constellation called Cygnus and is called Cygnus X-1.
Zodiacal constellations are the 12 constellations that the sun passes through during the year. Of the 88 celestial constellations, 47 were known to ancient people. There is no place on Earth where you could view all the constellations at once. The sky is divided into imaginary pieces called constellations. Looking at these triangles and points, the ancients imagined the characters of their favorite myths. Because of Earth's rotation around its axis, the constellations at night do not stand still, but quietly float across the sky. Let's imagine that the Earth is a cabin of a cosmic carousel, and at its center sits a luminous ball, the sun. If you pass on this slow carousel for a year, we notice that some constellations we see in the fall, others in winter, and different ones in spring and summer. Our planet is thought to be divided along the equator in the northern and southern hemispheres, and each of them, too, has their own starry sky. In the northern hemisphere, you can always see the mysterious Cassiopeia, and in the southern hemisphere, it is difficult to miss the Southern Cross constellation, which has been a guide for many sailors. Ursa Major Ursa Major is the third biggest constellation. Its seven bright stars make the Big Dipper. At the handle's bent, there is a star called Mizar, and next to it, Alcor. In ancient times, people used to check their eyesight with this star. The Big Dipper and Polaris are on the flag of Alaska. Ursa Major Have you seen how many stars there are in the night sky? To remember them, people divided them into groups, constellations, and gave them names. One of the most well-known constellations is called Ursa Major, the Big Dipper. It means larger bear in Latin. You can easily find it by seven bright stars in the shape of a dipper with a long handle. These seven bright and 200 less bright stars in this part of the sky make up the constellation. According to an ancient Greek legend, there was a girl called Callisto who was turned into a bear because she was so beautiful it made a goddess jealous. When Zeus found out about it, he put her up into the sky to save her from hunters. Besides Ursa Major, there are 87 other constellations. Orion. The meteor shower Orionids appears twice a year in this constellation. If you draw a straight line through Orion's belt, you will see Aldebaran in the west and Sirius in the east. The legend says that Orion was bitten by a scorpion and after death, he came to the sky. Orion The Orion constellation is on the celestial equator, which means that it is visible from both northern and southern hemispheres. 
It is easy to find it by three lined up stars, the famous Orion's Belt. According to ancient Greek myth, Orion was an unsurpassed hunter. He was very handsome and so tall that people called him a giant. In addition, he is the son of Poseidon, the god of water, and therefore inherited the ability to walk on water. The Orion constellation has many bright stars. Two of them are Betelgeuse and Rigel, real giants next to our sun. The constellation of Orion is also known for what is inside it. Even with the naked eye, you can see the swirling clouds of nascent stars, luminous gas, and dust, such as the Great Nebula of Orion. Which one is a natural satellite of the Earth? Mm -hmm. Which constellation has more stars? Mm -mm. Which star is larger? Mm -hmm. Which constellation is only visible in the Northern Hemisphere? Mm hmm Which is further from us? Mm hmm Great! Sun, sun, 